ended if technical problems interrupt the broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in a specific item should make plans for in-person attendance accordingly. The meeting number is 2341093-7795, and the password is Burlington with the capital B. All right, our um, first item of business is the approval of the August 1st meeting minutes. So moved. Um, uh, actually, so moved with us, uh, there were a couple of names that were misspelled and things, so I believe by Aiden updated that. Second. All right, any discussion on the meeting minutes? All right, uh, Mrs. Bond. Mrs. Monaco? Aye. Ms. Simon? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Aye. Dr. Conti? Yes. And Ms. Kasha? Aye. Mr. Cuna? Yes. Mr. Rosenblatt? Abstain. Uh, Mr. Volano? Yes. Ms. Priest? Aye. Mrs. Bunker? Uh, Mr. Lyons? Yes. Yes. Uh, and I am an I. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, zero, one. 12, 0, 1. And our next item is a previous public comment response from um, Dorn Woodier. Good evening. Uh, so we just wanted to address, there was three uh, comments at the last SBC meeting uh, with a response. The first question was, assuming the community decides to move forward with a single school option, would the town need to do a proposition two and a half override to pay for a second elementary school? Is there a plan to address this if a prop two and a half override does not pass? Uh, the response is, if a debt exclusion, a form of a two and a half over, or percent override, does not pass, we would need to find another way to fund the project at 100% of the cost and MSBA would withdraw, uh, would withdraw their participation. The next comment uh, was, has there been an analysis done on repairing Pine Glen as opposed to replacing it? The response is no, a repair only has not been studied as part of this process. We have explored option seven, which is a renovation, renovation addition. And then the last comment, how many millions would the town lose from the state if they don't go with two schools done at the same time? What's the difference between a debt exclusion and debt override? Uh, the response is, we expect to receive roughly 25 million for the single school option, or we could receive 39 million for the two schools on one property for a difference of 14 million from the MSBA. A debt exclusion would raise taxes for a fixed period of time, while a debt override would raise them permanently. Um, Madam Chair. Uh, Mrs. Simon. Um, I would like to know if um, on the website, um, if there is somewhere, probably under FAQs, a, a fuller description of what is a prop two and a half override, what is a debt exclusion, because people use a lot of those terms somewhat interchangeably. Um, also, the question of who has to vote on what for which kind is, is it keeps coming up. and. I think this is a good answer for the particular question that got asked, but is it possible for us to get a, a really clear definition and explanation on the website? Is that something we could do? Absolutely. That's great. Yeah, and I think that's something that we would want to work with the building committee and the town on the proper response to yeah. be provided on the, the website itself. So I, I don't know, Mr. Uh, Sagarino, Mr. Denizio are probably still in the yeah. select board meeting, but they would certainly be able to help, or maybe Mr. Riggs or, or people from the Ways and Means, um, because there are very, maybe you have a, a something to add. So I, I just think it's important. We keep using those terms and, and there's a lot of confusion. Thank you. I, I think you're right. I think it would be beneficial to put something on the website. Um, the state actually has very good descriptions of, of overrides and exclusions and you know YouTube videos that walk people through it. So we don't, I don't know that we have to provide the complete explanation, but we do need to say how it applies to our, our task. Yeah, I was going to say the same. I, I've 
gotten a lot of my information from that state website, so we can provide a link there. And um, again, I think we will know in the next few weeks what what we're specifically talking about that exclusion or um, not. Um, and, and I would support what Mr. Riggs just said, that it is particular to our situation, because I don't know exactly all the differences, but I, you know, I think given that we aren't at our complete tax levy, it may impact us differently and that kind of thing. So I th think being specific to our situation, maybe Mr. Riggs or other people from the Ways and Means can help figure out how to make it specific. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ed, go ahead. I can't hear you, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to add just a few words of, of clarification here because I think, um, I know we want to provide a pithy answer, but um, it's, it, it's more complicated than this, so I'll try to go one step more complicated. Um, the first question asks, specifically about a two-step process where we rebuilt Fox Hill and then took on a second project. Of course, it's even more complicated. There are several projects that, that need to be considered after Fox, Fox Hill. Hill. But, but I, it, assuming that, that there is reference to the Pine Glen School, um, the Pine Glen School wouldn't, in our estimation, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, get MSBA uh, funding. And so the answer um, is really not relevant to that situation. Um, in general, if you relied upon a debt exclusion or prop two and a half override to fund a project, and that was MSBA funded, and you failed that vote to do that override, the deal would be off with MSBA. That doesn't appear to be the, the, the issue here. Um, in, unless we determine that we need an override to do the first project, uh, which is unclear, and we'll be trying to estimate that. Um, and then with the third answer, I just want to point out that that $14 million difference in expected MSBA funding is relevant just to the two scenarios that have been modeled here. So building a consolidated school versus building a Fox Hill school, the Fox Hill option three, 325 uh, school, and then embarking on uh, the Pine Glen rebuild that was estimated as option nine, I believe. Um, and that $14 million is just 14 of a $60 million difference as estimated. The, um, the, the reason why that's important is that um, if we take that scenario as a given, then it's much more complicated than $14 million difference in MSBA reimbursement. Uh, we would have some probably complex combination of paying more money for the second rebuild or doing something less expensive than a rebuild and a, um, a, a renovation would be uh, considered or um, pushing that project in time down the road a good bit until we could afford it because debt overrides and things like that are in consideration. So it'd be a combination of those three things. Um, so it's it's we can't just pick a la carte the, the MSBA reimbursement we get or you know pick a la carte the location of the school. All of these things are wrapped together. Thanks, I think Catherine's hand is up. I, I just want to make a statement. People keep saying that we are not going to get uh, MSBA to review if we submit for Pine Glen. We have seen absolutely nothing in writing from MSBA that states that if we don't combine a school, um, you know, or do anything like that, that if we submit down the road, that they are not going to consider us. So I'd like to put that to bed. We do not have anything that supports that statement, but yet people keep saying it. Thank you. I was going to say the same thing Catherine said, basically, is that um, I, I don't think there's any evidence that this 
and we certainly don't have anything in writing to say they wouldn't support us. And as we go down the road, um, it's quite common for communities to get uh, funding within even four years for a second building. Jen? This question was asked in the past at a prior meeting. 95% um, it was recorded, and we were told that Pine Glen was off the table for reimbursement moving forward. It was in a, in a meeting. Who told you? It, in, it was in, during the meeting in the notes when we asked yeah. directly about it. We were told that when we were trying to make a decision on what would be best for the district and for the town, we were told that that was an option because some people were wondering, can we do one school and then just not do the other? And that had come up. So if we could get clarification from the MSBA on that piece before we start saying it's not an option, it is an option, because um, I have it in my notes that it was not an option moving forward. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I, it, it, that's not a question the MSBA will answer uh, for us. And Donna, you can weigh in on this. But uh, what they will say is every year is a new year. School communities, districts um, can choose one priority uh, in their statement of interest. And they go through every process individually every year, depending on the money they have and the needs of the building. So. Um, while they tend to try to spread out their money, I think that's what they would say across the Commonwealth, I've, I've never heard them say that you shouldn't apply, you mm -hmm. shouldn't submit a statement of interest, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just not sure that we'll get a definitive answer, but that's, that's uh, you've worked with them as long as I have or longer, so. Yeah, um, we will certainly reach out again to ask for clarification, but I, I agree with Dr. Conti, uh, although, Sometimes when, when you're looking at a combined, they're giving you an opportunity to do something now, and if you choose not to, they'll say, well, why, why are you choosing not to support? Why are you choosing not to consolidate now and we're giving you an opportunity? Was, um, I believe that was the premise of, of the conversation. But um, I, I don't think that they would categorically say no, you just, like the high school, you're, you're more than welcome to submit year over year, but we'll reach out one more time, see if we can get any definitive. Yeah, Martha? Um, yeah, I, I actually am fine assuming that down the road we could get money from MSB. I don't think it's actually that relevant. What I'm concerned about is all of these, the, these two answers that have to do with um, how much it's gonna cost and what the overrides will be don't include the fact that we still have a high school project which had been has been for 12 years the top priority for the school committee um, and and this doesn't even mention it and so in, in addition to what mr. Parsons said I think that it's important that it's very complex we are trying to juggle and we are trying to do fortune telling about how much the town can afford and will will afford will agree to pay for and what's the best configuration that people will agree to pay for. And then there's the additional factor that Dr. Conti raised at the select board meeting tonight, which is, and we don't, we want to be sure that this isn't going to impact on the operating budget because it's the education that's going on inside the schools and not the buildings that are top priority. We do a good job of maintaining our buildings. so. So again, I, when I raised it about trying to get some clarification about what overrides are, that's probably one thing that needs to be clarified. Probably another thing um, could be useful, you know, to add to some of the issues that Mr. Parsons had raised, and to, you know, and the town also feels, we, you know, we need a police, uh, a new police station, and that's not the purview of this committee or of the school committee. But those are all. Uh, needs that the town has. So I feel like we're really jumping the gun to say that down the road we're going to build another elementary school before we figure out how we're going to pay for the high school and the, the police department, which, so that's my two cents. Thank you. Um, I think we have public comment. Anyone? Okay, um, I think we have invoices, and I believe we can do a one motion, correct? Yes. All right. 
Uh, so this evening we have Doran Whittier's invoice number 10 in the amount of $21,892.50. That is our typical monthly invoice. We also have <clears throat> our uh, Denisco invoice number 9845 for basic services in the amount of $29,545. Again, that's their typical monthly billing. Uh, Denisco invoice number 9846 for traffic study in the amount of $4,419.25. Uh, Denisco invoice number 9847 for the uh, wetland slash ANRAD in the amount of $1,223.75. Um, the UEC invoice number 10166 in the amount of $4,500. And the L LGCI invoice number 207-01 in the amount of $17,925. Um, I move the invoices as presented. Second. Can you do me one favor and define UEC and LGCI? Yeah, so, um, I can't remember. <laughs> anyone, the, anyone. What's the UEC, again, stand for? I can't remember off the top it's of my head. It's Universal home. Environmental Consulting. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> and then LGCI, um, La, yeah. Aiden, can you tell me what the acronym is? I can't remember off the top of my head. These are invoices that we had before actually um, Denisco was on board for the uh, exploratory services that we had approved. Um, and so uh, okay. they were just Good uh, weren't approved by the full building committee. That's fine. I I'd honestly, just make it up. No, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it possible that we could get an update with like the graphs with what's been spent on the money that we've had set us for this portion to what's left? Yes. Yeah. So I, yeah, absolutely, no problem. Thank we'll you. do a screenshot of like the project dashboard that shows what we spent to date, what's remaining uh, within the four different bucket lines. I appreciate it, thank you. All right, um, Mrs. Bond. Hi. Ms. Monaco? Yes. Ms. Simon? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Hi. Dr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Kasha? Yes. Mr. Kuna? Yes. Mr. Rosenblatt? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Ms. Priest? Aye. Mrs. Bunker? Yes. Mr. Lyons? Yes. I am a yes, 1300. Okay. Sorry, I'm slow loading it down here. Oh, discuss the referendum. Okay, so Paul is not here, um, but we voted on our last meeting to approach the select board for a referendum. 